Look at that. The city is almost complete. I don't need to highlight anything today to tell you what still needs to be done because that huge empty valley just past the highway ring is really hard to miss. So that's exactly what we will fill today. Not in parts, but completely in one go. We are going to build a solar farm, rail yard with a futuristic looking passenger train depot, build some little suburbs, plant a lot of trees and also uncover ancient ruins. But first, let's start near the previous project because we have tram stop to build and complete the city blocks. Let's go. Okay, so we are right on the side of the SCAR, the, the industrial underground entrance to that uh, maintenance level, I guess, underneath the entire city. So we built a tram track running through the entire length of it last time, but uh, there also needs to be some kind of a stop on this side. So I already did the stop over here, but as you can see, it's just an empty track right now. So we need to do some entrances to it and uh, just expand the city past, uh, well, this point. So uh, this uh, stop needs to be sunken because it needs to, the tracks need to go below this main road into that industrial level. So, you know, it just was aiming in this uh, direction, like vertically as well. So I really need to have it like this. That's perfect though, because obviously vertical tram stops are the best, either up and down doesn't really matter. So uh, I can just use some of the buildings to really just enclose this entire tram stop. It's kind of going to be a little hidden, even though I'm definitely heavily thinking of the first person perspective around here. So you will actually see me even detail some of the stuff that's not exactly going to be relevant to, let's say, the bigger picture, the bigger cinematics, but it's going to be very much relevant to the first person perspective. So I'm going to be trying to do something, something like that. Now, uh, I'm obviously going to prepare for the first person rides even before I record them. So this is not really going to be the final detailing I'm going to do around here. Uh, this particular line, I'm going to record it uh, after maybe like two episodes of Asturias. I'm not really sure right now. So uh, it's going to be fairly soon, but I can guarantee you that I would really like to pay attention to just how the city looks in front of the tram. Uh, I saw the comments between, or sorry, below the previous tram ride that some of the pedestrian areas of the city might be a little empty. I mean, that was kind of the intention right from the start to have them empty and just have the people fill the volume, which, uh, you know, it kind of needs to be like that in City Skylines because you cannot obviously just tell people to not bump into things. And so there are some, uh, you know, pedestrian, like widths of the pedestrian paths. So I cannot just uh, place like trash cans in the middle of some open spaces because I cannot really tell people to avoid it, right? So, you know, what's going to be better, right? To have people clipping through objects or to have the, per the, the pedestrian spaces like cluttered with details. It's kind of a hard decision. I don't suppose there is a good answer to that. It just depends on, you know, what you prefer. But uh, judging from the comments, uh, I guess you guys might prefer uh, the detail and uh, just people bumping into things occasionally it might be all right. So I'm going to try obviously not to have people bump into things, but I will try to just uh, put some things in the open areas around this tram line. So I'm going to be kind of trying that already right now, but uh, before, just before the ride, I'm going to do it. I'm probably going to do it just, you know, off camera. So you're going to see the results in the ride. Well, anyway, enough of that. So let's now talk about this project. So this particular tram track that goes uh, below that street level, I just need to detail the sides of it, I need to create this uh, trench. But obviously trenches are kind of boring if you just do, you know, walls on both sides. So I tried to just line it with trees everywhere I could, everywhere the trees fit. And uh, then I'm just gonna fill it with some other details as you will later see. I'm also deleting gravel from below the tracks, as you can see over here, to just have the grassy background here. And uh, now I'm going to use intersection marking tools and I'm just going to put some kind of greenery, some weeds, maybe like uncut grass, uh, just between the, the ties, between the rails, just to 
you know, have something there. Like I said, this is the kind of detail that's not really going to be visible from the bigger aerial shots of the city, but it's definitely going to stand out with uh, the first person, right? These kinds of long sections of the tracks are otherwise a little too monotone. So, you know, maybe also the first person rides are not really all about the pedestrian areas and the plazas and things, but also these kinds of details. So, uh, maybe I don't need to add some more clutter into the pedestrian places, but I might just focus on details elsewhere. And like, let's say on average, the ride experience is just going to look more detailed. Therefore, there's not going to be that much emphasis on the pedestrian areas. You know, some, something like that. Uh, I'm definitely going to do the first person ride of this track during the night. I'm actually thinking of switching it up. I usually do it during the day and then back during the night. This one I'm going to do the opposite because it's going to start at the harbor, the first one that we built. Well, spoiler alert, I guess, because next episode is going to be the second one. Well, anyway, so this one is going to start in the old harbor and it absolutely needs to start during the night because you're going to see the space elevator. You're going to see that lightsaber bridge, you know, the purple one, and you're just going to go through the city center. So that absolutely needs to be uh, viewed during the night. But don't worry, there's going to be the back ride during the day as well. And during the day, obviously, those places really need to be just a little bit more detailed. Uh, lights are not really going to cut it during, uh, during, the, during the day. Well, anyway, this is just a tiny, tiny little plaza. This building is absolutely perfect for it. It's kind of like enclosing this plaza, obviously. It's creating a retaining wall in a way. I don't need to detail it on my own. Uh, it was very convenient, this area, because uh, this building has like a little terraced place that was perfectly matching the terrain level, so I could just cover it uh, with the pavement here to just match it with the uh, sidewalk on the side of this road uh, that I'm just putting these pedestrian paths to, and it just perfectly fit. Uh, this place, I really don't need to detail at all. This one is just so small that there's just going to be some kind of interesting pattern on the surface, a couple of uh, planters, uh, benches, and that's it. Because as you can even see with these pedestrian paths that I'm doing here, they pretty much cover the whole area. So once again, people people would just be like bumping into so many things and it would just not look very good. On the large plazas, yeah, sure, that's going to be so much easier. On these small ones, it really makes no sense to detail them much more because they cannot really be functional at that point. Yeah, that's, I guess, what I should have said right from the beginning. Well, anyway, that's, uh, that's the tram stop. That's already the tram stop completely done. Uh, this particular project or this episode, I'm just going to do these places completely and then I'm just going to move on to the next block. Yeah, something like that. So that's the tram stop uh, block uh, with all the trees, all the details, everything. And now we're just going to move to something else. So I obviously need to fill the place inside this uh, train loop, which is uh, just kind of below this uh, interchange. So not much space over here, but there are some of these quadrants, let's say, uh, around here inside the loop that, yeah, sure, I can fill with something. And it's actually going to be a nice continuity to just not end the city like suddenly with some kind of high density blocks and then trees, right? So there's just going to be more parking lots because, uh, you know, space is not really at the premium over here. So we can just fill the place with uh, something kind of useless like that. But it's just a nice detail. Really, we're gonna have plenty of greenery past to this area, so that's fine. And this is actually a nice shape, or well, kind of a clunky shape, nice shape for a parking lot, but uh, terrible for buildings. So this is absolutely perfect. It's kind of the entrance to the city, so it also makes sense to have some kind of uh, these parking lots where people can just leave their cars and continue with some public transport if they wanted to. Also, I'm gonna fill this place with lots of offices. As you can see, I have very high industrial or just job demand in the city, so I'm really trying to not really do more residential, but mostly focus on offices, those we really need still, even after the, the previous project, which was, which was very industrial heavy. Uh, there are also some kind of clunky uh, terrain uh, height differences or around this train loop because obviously it needs to loop down. So it creates this uh, like uneven terrain. I need to put it in a trench, as you can see over here. But at the same time, I just want to have some sort of nice looking uh, place for buildings, not too slowed because, you know, the natural terrain doesn't look exactly that great around buildings, around slopes. I would need to put 
lots of terraforming networks around, but it's actually so much easier to just create these retaining walls on the side of the train tracks. Yeah, sure, then I will have some inconsistency here, as you can see with the heights, even with the procedural object grass. But as always in City Skylines, you can just detail the ugly away with trees. So that's, that's what I'm doing over here. And it's super effective, as you can see. What's also kind of important, I'm not doing it over here, but I should have, uh, is to lock forestry. That is absolutely essential if you want to do like artificial grass surface. So with ploppable grass, with procedural objects or just props, doesn't matter. And uh, then you are combining it with the normal terrain and you're going to place trees around it. The normal terrain is going to darken because it's going to get the forestry, but obviously the artificial terrain won't. So that is going to be like a visible transition between there. If you're going to lock forestry before placing trees, then the transition is not going to happen. Uh, it's much more pronounced on certain map themes, of course. Uh, I'm using like a customized uh, tone of the forestry to really just have like a different texture, like, like one more texture, right? Because in City Skylines, Unfortunately, even in CS2, there really are no, not that many surface textures to really play with. So you have to, you have to make do with what you have, of course. This is going to probably be the very first and only uh, gas station in the entire city. No, wait, actually, no, we did one gas station, or I think I called it like an antimatter exchange station or something like that. But there was just this little triangle over here between the streets and uh, that railway down here. So why not fill it with uh, something like this? It's just, a, it's just a simple little detail uh, that just it's, you know, it's a different surface as well, completely different compa compared to residential or offices. So why not? These particular residential buildings, yeah, sure, they are residential. I said I don't want to do that many residential, but hey, I, I cannot really do offices only. And actually in the next episode, I already spoiled it, we're going to do a harbor, second one on the other side of the elevator, space elevator bay. So there's going to be plenty of industry right there. And I'm also going to play with some Rico settings, uh, you know, in between the episodes so that I'm going to just uh, do some changes to some of the buildings that I have in the city. I have still plenty of buildings in the city that are just unique buildings without any purpose whatsoever. So those obviously need to be changed to something. I really want to have the city very high density, but at this point, the city is kind of, you know, done. So it's, it's not like we're going to increase the population by, you know, tens of thousands. It's more or less going to stay at these values. Well, anyway, speaking of uh, not wanting to build more residential, let's build more residential, uh, these uh, low density suburbs. Uh, but seriously, I'm just doing these to really do a decoration on the side of the city. Uh, I think I did exactly the same thing back in the day in my previous series in Aurelia City, using these green cities, vanilla buildings. Yeah, I know, using vanilla buildings. But these are actually looking rather nice. They're kind of futuristic. They are supposed to be these like eco homes or something. So yeah, they fit. They fit the city combined with these uh, brick roads. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's like a background detail on the edge of the city. I'm not really going to build like super huge neighborhoods, uh, but just an indication that the city is not just like huge skyscrapers and then just farm fields or forests, yeah, without any kind of low to medium density transition. So that's that's the only purpose of these of these neighborhoods. So that's that's even the reason why I'm not exactly paying attention to them that much, even though, as you can see, I really don't want to just have uh, some sort of a regular grid for these. So I'm just trying to have it a little bit different. Uh, just a couple of more ponds around the area just to fill the place with, but also, you know, introduce these ponds, introduce a different color to the scenery. That's that's always welcome. So it's a it's just a nice little detail. Obviously, the most important detail in this place are trees. So it's actually not a detail at all, or, well, I guess depends on how you define a detail, but uh, it's definitely not a small thing. Yeah, let's let's say it that way, because it's going to be the, the, the major thing that just fills the volume outside of the city. Now, speaking of filling 
uh, large volume or large area around the city, let's build a train yard. We don't really have a train yard in the city. We don't have any depot in the city. So this is the only empty place where we can really build it. So let's do it. I was actually taking a look at uh, Google Maps for this one. I was taking a look at the train yard and depots near Hamburg. Uh, there's like a, like a really big train yard right there. And uh, I was mostly looking at it to just get these kinds of switches at the starts, right? So it's not like you need to build like a single track going through the center or to the sides, but there are these like branches and those branches then gonna branch out. There's usually like four or five tracks uh, in that final branch. So that's kind of what I'm doing over here. And it's actually finally starting to look a little bit more realistic compared to my other attempts at uh, train yards. So yeah, finally, after all these years, I can do these tracks uh, somewhat okay. And it's actually looking looking pretty good. Now, I'm not really going to going to detail it like super crazy high, but uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to just use these uh, futuristic high-speed cargo trains, uh, just the wagons in here, and uh, on the side, just like in real life, I'm going to build this like a parking lot for engines. So, it's these uh, two parallel tracks, and they are going to have these like slightly angled tracks, uh, similar to like angled parking. It's actually like a very, very similar layout or very similar approach. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. Uh, these kinds of uh, cargo trains, the futuristic ones, they actually kind of look a little, little weird when they are alone without the wagons because they have just that, you know, empty face at the back. But that just makes it look maybe a little interesting in a way. Well, anyway, so we also need to complete the tracks going all the way to the edge of the map. So I'm just going to do that right here very quickly. It's supposed to be uh, kind of like a high speed quotation marks uh, cargo railway, even for passengers, though. So, you know, not that many turns. We need to make it as straight as possible right through the center of the valley. It's actually going to be a nice dividing line for the solar farm later that I'm going to build. Right, so uh, that's the main track going through here. Then on one side, that's the train yard. And on this other side, we're going to do a depot for the passenger trains. Again, something that we don't have in the city just yet. There are some like uh, unused tracks in that main transportation hub in the center, but obviously nothing like a, like a man maintenance depot. So that needs to be uh, built separately right here. I'm just going to use these industrial buildings. I'm going to use them as buildings. I'm not going to convert them to procedural objects because I guess I want to have some sort of traffic going into them. And well, it's that industry that the city requires, like gameplay wise for, uh, because you know, we don't have that many uh, jobs as you can see by the demand. So I'm just going to sink these buildings a little lower to not have them as tall and to make them resemble like combined like this, to make them resemble uh, some sort of a warehouse or just like a big hall, in this case, a maintenance hall for the trains. I'm just going to fill the, 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 the front with some tracks, do the switches. I'm going to also do them on the other side for the maybe intercity trains or just trains arriving from the other side. But I'm not even going to show that all because that's obviously going to be exactly the same as on both ends. This obviously needs some sort of uh, road to enter it. So I'm just going to use these parking lot roads to just have like a bigger area of asphalt near the entrances, maybe acting as some sort of a parking lot for some trucks bringing in supplies and these kinds of things. I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be mostly like an automated depot or maintenance area. So I don't really need to build like a big a parking lot for workers or something. So I'm just going to do this like a control tower, maybe even for the train yard or mostly for the train yard, I guess, and like huge antennas over there. I did some similar antennas actually on the other side of the city on that uh, smaller train station and even in the industrial zone and these kinds of more important places. So I guess the entire city is just cross-connected with some kind of communications networks uh, related to infrastructure. So it can be like uh, driven from some sort of central headquarters. But anyway, now I'm finally making that solar 
farm. For this purpose, I'm gonna be using the solar network made by CityWalk CityWall. I believe that he used it in his Mars series long time ago already. Yeah, time flies, unfortunately. But here I'm just going to use it to just fill the rest of the area outside of the city. It's a perfect detail, it's much better detailed in Asturias, especially compared to some suburbs or, you know, just fill it with trees or like more ponds or something. So this looks nice and futuristic and I really have, uh, when I have it done, I really have an interesting shape defined by the highway and the railway. The rest of these little areas I'm just going to fill with trees and it's going to be a really nice contrast. I oriented these uh, solar farms to aim towards the city so that uh, when I'm going to do some cinematics looking from the city, they are just going to nicely reflect uh, the sun. So they're actually going to, uh, they are going to appear like... Uh, like some kind of body of water as well. So that's, that's a little interesting, but as you move the camera, you're just going to have different color of that, uh, of that solar array. So that's overall an interesting detail. And obviously it's very linear. So, you know, it's just kind of unnatural. It's just dif different. It's just weird, right? And it's huge. That's, that's the main point. Now, what is this? These are the ancient ruins. Asturias' historians always knew that there used to be a different city before Asturias was founded some couple of hundreds or thousands of years ago. Uh, the historians are not exactly sure because records from that time period are uh, not exactly available. They have been destroyed. There was a big natural catastrophe on the entire planet that completely shifted the entire climate, completely shifted uh, where the trees are growing. So uh, it's not exactly clear what kind of civilization was here, but it is clear that they were very fond of these buildings because they were actually found all over the city, the ancient city. They are frequently still being found when Asturias' maintenance underground is being extended. But uh, the historians are just not sure what was the purpose, what was actually the system that was used to, to build these. They found some ancient machinery half rusted away, so that is also interesting. Well, anyway, it's just a little excavation site. Uh, it's perhaps in the way of future city expansion. So the, uh, the archaeologists, uh, they really need to work fast to preserve everything and perhaps even move it to some uh, safe location, a museum, I guess. So that is going to be that on the outside of the city. We will never know what these ruins mean. Anyways, this is the before and after. Yeah, this is, this is by far the biggest area filled. Well, maybe the dams were actually bigger projects, but it's huge. Obviously, the solar farms, even though it's, it's kind of a simple project, but a very needed one. Look at that. It's done. This part of the city is completely done. The mainland part of the city is completely done. It has the industry on the outside. It has like a gradually decreasing density. So we are starting with the super high in the center. And then we are starting to have some parks, some gaps between the buildings, not clipping them together too much. And eventually it's all going into this medium density, just, uh, you know, a couple of houses and the low density suburbs. Past the highway ranks, there is just some, you know, technical stuff. So the solar farms, of course, and the train depot. That's just this uh, futuristic looking thing. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, kind of just controlled by the tower, right in the center. These are the excavations of the ancient ruins of some uh, dwellings of uh, past citizens of this area that the historians and archaeologists are trying to figure out, trying to excavate maybe some more if there are around and, uh, well, see what's, uh, what's going on, what was going on in the past. This is, this is that final tram depot, sorry, tram stop in uh, this entire part of the city. Uh, we're not done with trams just yet. In the next episode, I am going to build actually two more tram stops. Uh, one like a bigger transfer station between trains as well. It's going to be a terminus station for trains too. So that's going to be, you know, bigger, but we're also going to just complete another train, uh, sorry, tram line. Well, train line as well, but like I said, the terminus station. 
So that was the scar, that was the underground entrance to all the industry below Asturias. Uh, this is just an overview of the entire area. Now, by the way, I am going to, of course, do some kind of a cinematic only episode. So this is just a little preview of it. In that cinematic, uh, you know, only part, I would like to do some kind of bigger shots of the city because I can, finally. Everything in view is completely done. So I don't need to just move the camera carefully, strategically. So I'm not going to uh, show the unfinished places too much uh, because everything's going to be finished. So, you know, I'm very much looking forward to recording all of that. But I must we're going to also focus on all the little details. Yeah, this is this is kind of the view that's uh, a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, because that's exactly what I would like to focus on. These kinds of overall views of the finally completed city, especially the transportation hub in the center. Now, uh, I'm kind of proud of it, yeah, not gonna lie. I really like how it turned out with the, all the high density around it, because obviously it's not just the transportation hub, not just the tracks and platforms, but the scenery around it. And uh, after today, everything on the mainland is finally done. After the next episode though, the entire map is gonna be done. The next episode is going to be the last building episode of the Asturias series, that's right. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked this video. If you did, then, you know, please do all the things below it. You know the drill, clicking, writing, subscribing, sharing. And if you are a big fan of this channel, you can become a channel member. Big thanks to all the existing channel members. I really, really appreciate your guys' support. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.